Everyone, it's Jada Boy from True Star. Today for our Shy Creators section, we're talking to local artist Lorenz King. Lorenz, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us. Thank you. It's nice. It's nice to be here. <laughs> well, I'm gonna jump straight into it. How would you describe yourself? Um, I would describe myself as a hmm. I try to describe myself as a well-rounded person. Um, I can, I usually have a lot of energy and I'm trying to be the person who, um, man, that's a good question. Um, I would say I'm a very well-rounded person who likes to help out others and be inspiration for others. Yes, Keep love it. <laughs> what inspired you to be a creative? Um, I've, I've been creating for as long as I can remember. Um, <clears throat> it's just been a passion of mine. And as I got older and started to put out more of my work because I moved from like crayons and like watercolors when I was younger, to like different mediums like paint, um, uh, like shoes, clothes, like that type of stuff. I like to see people's reaction, reactions to my work, um, being able to impact somebody or say something to someone without really saying a lot, it like inspires me a lot. So that is one of the um, things that keeps me going, keeps me creating. Nice. Well, I saw on your Instagram page that you customize shoes, and I know that you're also known for that. And I personally love them. Like, I need to go buy some new ones so you could go ahead and paint some for me on the shoes. But what inspired you to customize shoes? Um, well, almost four years ago now, it was June of 2017. Um, I had some old Harachis. They was all white. I don't know why I bought all white shoes. Um, Cause I was such a busybody when I was younger, and I dirtied them up and like I messed them up in like a few weeks, and I wasn't ready to let them go because it was like my first pair of clean shoes. So I tried to clean them up, and I got some paint out of my room, and I painted them, and I posted them. And when I posted them, people were like, "Hey, where you buy these?" I was like, "I made them." Like, like I didn't know they were that good. And so people started reaching out to try to like find the shoes where I got them from. Once I told them I made them, they wanted me to do the same thing. So really uh, um, uh, attempt to keep my shoes a little bit longer turned into a business per se. So now I take shoes and I paint them and I'm starting to move more into clothes and stuff too. So it was really an accident, I'll be honest. Wow, so you took a messed up pair of shoes and created something that everybody wants. Like, can you say talent? I wish I can honestly do that. I have a whole bunch of shoes and it needs to be thrown away, but I'm not really ready to let them go. If I learned how to paint them, I, I would do exactly what you just did. But anyways, what famous artists and business people have inspired you? Um, hmm, that's a good question. So artists um, that inspire me, are there's a local artist well he's not local anymore he lives in Oregon but um an artist named Julian Gaines who's a few years older than me but he started with kind of doing the same thing he's like a freelance artist and his style and creativity inspires me a lot to be different um another artist that I like is uh, Takashi Murakami I didn't even know I liked his work so early on. He designed the graduation album for Kanye West. Um, and I like his styles like different. It's like a cartoonist. So um, it's all, like that also inspires me to be different. Um, on the business side, I don't think I really have any um, uh, like kind of role models in the business side. Uh, Julian does. I like the the moves that Julian made. So if I could put him in both categories, I would. But business, uh, I don't really have a lot of uh, inspirations necessarily in the business side. Okay, so you like they swag. You think they got a little swag on? 
<laughs> um, right. What sort of struggles have you encountered as a creative teen who is also a young entrepreneur? Um, I'll say one of my one of my main struggles that I kind of still struggle with now is time management. Oh, same. Um, yeah. So I mean, being a student alone, I struggle with time management. At times, I'm starting to get better. Um, and I struggle with that a lot with painting because um, like homework will take a few hours, painting will take like hours and days. So it's like, I need to, I, I had to learn how to balance like fun, school and painting. Um, and I feel like painting has also helped me balance better in school too. So that's something I struggle with a lot. Um, uh, I think that's really all that I struggle with as an artist or entrepreneur. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I as well struggle with time management and also I procrastinate a lot. Yeah. So I definitely understand where you're coming from with that. But what was the inspiration behind the artwork that you currently have on display at the Black Creativity Exhibit? I believe it was RIP Jared Higgins. It was Juice World's piece. What was the inspiration behind that? I just wanted to try something different. Like I keep mentioning, I like to be different. So um, I don't like making stuff that big. Like the most, most of the projects that I do, you can put on a table. Um, so I wanted to try something different. I was like, you want to like Juice World passed away. And that was one of my favorite artists, like creatives. Um, I liked his music. I liked the way he expressed himself. I liked how he was different. He didn't care. And I liked the way he carried himself as a person from what I could see. And it also was a plus that he was from relatively the same um, area that I was from. So I, was, I just wanted to try something new. Um, so I got this huge canvas. And honestly, I was a little bit nervous. Like, what if it doesn't come out right? Um, and I just kind of um, just painted. Um, it took a few months and I just wanted to paint like kind of how I felt and it just came out, it came out. I didn't really plan it. I just picked up like my pencil and started sketching and then I didn't really like it all the way up until I finished it. So I think it came out nice, but I just really wanted to do something big for something that I cared about and push my limits a little bit. Well, I just want to say it came out great. I as well love Juice Swirl, and I wish it came in like a poster size I could just hang up in my room because I, I love him. I love his music. I'm also a fan of Uzi. Like, I love all of them. Thank but you. how would you say you've grown as an artist since your last piece, I believe, was Little Chance from 79 that you had displayed at the museum? Um, mostly being comfortable with being uncomfortable. So like I said, I've never really... <clears throat> made anything that size or like that scale. So obviously you can see the the difference in size. Excuse me, I've also been also experimenting with other mediums. So with the with the first piece that I did of Chance, um, it was mostly Sharpies, pencils and like watercolors because as like a self-taught artist, I don't really know how to use um, different art, like materials and mediums until I try it and kind of like work my way through it. So I wasn't really comfortable with using like acrylic paint like I did on the Juice World painting. So really I just was like, I just want to try something new. So I just pushed my limbs a little bit. Um, and I've learned to like trust the process more um, because with things like of that size, when you first start it, when you halfway through, it is not like look that it doesn't look finished at all, and it can be, um, it can unmotivate me at times. But I've learned to like kind of ground myself and be patient and trust myself, really. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, what would you say is your ultimate goal, career goal? I should say. Um. My ultimate goal is to be as big and well-known as the artists and creatives that are marvelized now, but also be able to reach back to people who are in my position right now. 
So like, I don't want to be able to, I want to use my platform and my audience to basically say, there's more like me, there's more better than me. Like, check this out. So I want to be able to be a platform for others because I have a few people that are in close reach to me that I could reach out to or that'll put me in this situation to kind of help me as an artist or even as a person. Um, but for whatever reason, maybe like family, time, location, they're not always able to do that. So I want to be able to like balance what I'm doing and use that platform to help others to skip all the steps in between. All right. Well, what steps are you taking to make this goal a reality? Um, Right now, um, I found a few uh, mentees that are, that live in my neighborhood um, that I kind of help out now. So I, I practice uh, um, keeping up with school, keeping up with our projects and being able to keep up with like one of my little bros and they projects. Um, and kind of like, if I have a, if I'm invited to uh, um, like a, what's that called? Pop-up shop. And I'm invited to bring my work or showcase work or sell or I'll bring them with me even though if they don't have anything to sell or showcase just to be able to like see what it's like when they have their own or be able to make a connection and network with someone that's there. So I'm trying to practice this on a smaller scale as a 19 year old. So five, 10, 15 years down the line, it's going to be on a bigger scale, but it's nothing I can't really handle because I've been kind of doing it for a while. All right. And I like the fact that you're becoming a mentor as well, being an inspiration to younger men or whatever artists, I should say, but looking back at what you've done so far in your life, what would you have done differently with your art? Mm, I would have definitely pushed myself. Um, I like I like trying new things, but at the same time, I think a lot and I like to be comfortable. So I would have um, definitely pushed my limits more. And that's not even just in art. I feel like I had a few opportunities that presented themselves that I didn't see because I wasn't as I wasn't comfortable with being uncomfortable. So although I might have missed some of these opportunities, I still am where I am today and I'm thankful for that. But I'm sorry. But um I wish I would have been in my own ear or been in my own head to like, push myself to make the extra step in art um and any other art spaces that I was in. Yes, I definitely understand being your own motivation. Right. That's what that's what you need to do. But I know that you've been in, you just came back from college. I believe you go to Morehouse three weeks ago. You know, you're surrounded by people from many different states, cities, all many different cultures, basically. What's so Chicago to you? Um a lot a lot of people say like, oh bro, like it's a lot of that. Um, in Atlanta, and like some everybody's from all over there, so when they hear that like on oh, bro or gang, like when you refer to your friend or like family, like I hear a lot of that. People from like Virginia be like, "What, what you saying? Like, what what that mean?" So, um, uh, yeah, I hear a lot of that. I think that's so Chicago. I hear somebody say, hey, "What up, gang?" Like, I know you from the city. Like, what's up, bro? <laughs> I know it could be irritating sometimes. You know, you go out of state and people, you know, you say you're from Chicago, they instantly say on phone them, oh, you from Chirag, oh, you from 63rd, like, yes. and then I, you actually talk, they be like, oh, that's so Chicago, like, oh, whatever, okay. Um, but also, now that the world is opening back up since the pandemic, what are you most looking forward to doing? Um, I really want to, like, network, like, meet new people. Uh, it's a, it's actually a lot of creatives here that I feel don't get a lot of recognition. Um, I feel like a lot of heavy hitters be coming out of Chicago, but um, part of the reason I feel like we don't get the recognition is we don't work together like we should. So being in college and seeing kids coming in groups from other places, I see how they work together and see how they progress and not in just art and school, sports, like jobs, internships. So um what I want to do, especially like this summer, is like meet some new people that make music, meet some new people that like make art and collaborate with them, bounce off each other and see how much we can progress like together. Um, Cause I feel like 
even me personally, I haven't been out and I haven't been interacting with a lot of, I mean, not a lot, as many artists as I could be or creators as I could be. So that's what I want to do more of, um, at least while I'm here. Nice. What advice would you give to local artists who are trying to come up? So people that are trying to be like you. Um, I would say, and I say this a lot, I even say this to my mentees, just like trust the process. I say that to myself in every aspect of my life. Um, when I first started like painting, I didn't get the attention or the commissions that I feel like I should, but I didn't just stop. Like if it's a passion, just keep doing it and whatever's meant for you is going to come. I didn't know that painting my Harachis and throwing them on Instagram with like 13 likes was going to turn into me painting shoes almost four years later as a business. Um, so I would say, yeah, like trust the process, especially with social media. Um, it's easy to get distracted and it's easy to get distracted and look at what someone else is doing from your phone. And that could be, that could, I could really like hold you back. So I would just say, just stay in your lane, focus on you and just stay true to whatever you believe in and whatever's meant for you will come. Yeah. Now I know you're an artist right now. I know you do a lot of different things, but was your ultimate goal, was it to be an artist? That was your ultimate goal? Um, That's actually something that I'm still figuring out today because I haven't gone to like art school. I haven't been in art class. I just like to do, I just like to be creative. I'm starting to find out. So it started with like painting and stuff, but I, I like do a little bit of music, photography. So really I'm still figuring out what the main goal is, but then I don't know if I'm being honest, I don't think I should know at this age and I don't want to know because I feel like I'm gonna put a cap on my future, but I just know that right now creating art is like a good avenue for me. It's a um, a good relief and it makes me happy. So I'm gonna just keep doing that and then see what happens. Like I said, trust the process. So I'm still figuring it out myself. Yeah, and I like that. The fact that you, you don't know, but you know, you still wanna be open to many other things. Right. You know, I feel you on that. I don't know what I wanna be, but I'm only 16 years old. I'm not really supposed to know what I wanna do. But that was all the questions we had. Thank you so much, Lorenz, for taking time to talk to True Star. Who can, where can people follow you on social media? What's your Instagram tag, Twitter? Um, my Instagram is loose.laced, like shoestrings. And my Twitter is loose laced with two Ds. All right. Well, you heard it there. You know where to follow him. Go ahead. Show some love to his page and his art. And this is Jada. And thank you for hanging with True Star, everyone. <laughs>